So I get on this cart, man, and I'm, you know, I need a ride down the backstage. Uh -huh. And so these two gals pick me up. They're real kind, and and uh, and we got to talking, and they right. took me right backstage. Uh -huh. and I said I need to try to make some kind of connection to get to Flyleaf. Right. And, um, and I'm trying to think of her name as I'm saying that. The sweet girl, Laura. Yeah, yeah. Laura Love. Yeah. The Miss Laura, the Miss Lovely Laura Love. Well, yeah, but uh, I'm thinking of the I don't even know right. the name of Flyleaf, the girl singer. Oh, okay. What's her name? Uh, Lisa or. Or uh, something. Uh, Laura, Laura would know St that. Stacy yeah. or something. Yeah. Up and there's Flyleaf right beside me. Right, so I right. walk right up to her, hand her my card, and she. I said, well, I'd like to have an interview with this afternoon. Are you busy? She says, no, there's no. I've, uh -huh. I've got all the time in the world. And I said, she, she said, are we going to talk about Jesus? And I said, what do you Absolutely. mean? Absolutely. I said, I said, well, why? She goes, because every time I go somewhere, they never ask me about Jesus. I'd have an exclusive interview with Flyleaf. She's going to call me on my cell phone, but we have to get our backstage passes from Tom at 5 o'clock. Let's rock. Let's do it, brother. Ah. And Laura, by the way, this is for you because you deserve it. You do so much at, Un or at uh, Shepherd Fellowship Church, and uh, it's all about Jesus, though. So remember that. And it's going to be exciting. I'm excited about it. I hope you are, too. It's a really long story. Um, well, I used to be an atheist, I didn't believe in God, and, and I don't think I would have believed if I hadn't seen because somebody was like God in my life and made just miraculous events that led up to me. Um, actually, I guess, got me, like, to God's hand in my life, I guess. I, I was uh, 16, and um, I was really suicidal at the time, and then, uh, and then I just think God chased me into life until I finally, uh, I don't know, like, he kind of manifested his presence in my life in a way that I couldn't deny that he was real. Were you a writer all the time, or? Uh... Well, um, I guess I was kind of a dep depressed and uh, a lot growing up. And when I'd go to bed, I just wouldn't be able to shut my mind off. And so, in order to like, I guess, deal with that, I would always get up and just write and write and write until I got it all out. And then sometimes it didn't make any sense. And most of the time, it did. But uh, a lot of songs came out that way. And still come out that way. And where do you get your inspiration? Uh, uh, it's just life, you know. I mean, everything, is, everything is a story, and a lesson, and, and it just depends on how you look at things, you know. So you can get you can get a story or a song or inspiration from anything, depending on your point of view yeah. and how what you're looking for, you know. I mean, God says that um, the earth is filled with His glory, and so it just depends on where where you're looking. Yeah. And how do you incorporate Jesus in your music? That's <laughs> a weird question. Because uh, to me, Jesus is already incorporated into everything. It says, in him all things hold together. And I totally believe that. So they get to the core of anything, which is where we always want to be. It's always Jesus. The rest is just the effects of Jesus. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> from Laura as far as she wanted to know oh, about the song Red, Red Sand. Uh, about my testimony, um, uh, I was really suicidal at the time and I was 16 and, uh, and then uh, when I did get saved I recognized it. God had been there the whole time and I just wasn't able to see and wasn't recognizing you know, how it was working and denying a lot of things. Like, it's crazy to me to wake up in the world we live in and, and to breathe not have any explanation for that and then just go about your life like it's just crazy to me that people can watch a sunset and think oh that's just uh chemicals and that's the only reason for it. you know why why would we be able to see colors and i don't know just no, i guess that's what that's what red sand was like all along god was around me and i remember even before i believed in god i'd go on stage go on my roof and just to kind of run away and, learn, and watch the sunset every night and that was the only thing constant to me in my life it was so crazy and at that time I, that I didn't believe in God I just didn't realize he was romancing me the whole time and when I finally like recognized it was him everything fit
fit together, all the pieces fit together. I saw where he had been there, even when I was denying it. It's kind of what that sounds about. What advice would you give Laura as far as a, a teenager going through a lot of the pressures in life and all that, uh, as far as how to carry on, how to keep going, straight, staying strong for the Lord? Um, well, uh, you know, uh, it depends on what you're doing and where you're at in your life, I guess, but it will be most important for you, but it's just that if you delight yourself in the Lord, then all everything else will be added to you. So the, the, the hardest thing for someone to do who's a teenager and they're trying to figure out what to do with their life or what God's going to do with, with their life, you know, the hardest thing would be to say, to say that today's a gift and then you wake up today looking for God's blessing or how God's going to use you or whatever. And a lot of times we sit and wait for the future and we're worried and restless and, and then we miss what's happening right now because we're waiting for something. And then when we get to the future, we'll be waiting for something else, and then we're never here, and we never see what's happening. And I was reading Brennan, Brennan Manning, is one of my favorite authors, and I was reading something he was saying about, about how the most beautiful sound is the sound of the present, and what's happening right now. And I thought that was really good because we never sit and listen to what's happening right now. And there's, in, in uh, the screw tape letters, the, the demons are trying to like, it's a book by C.S. Lewis, yes, uh, the demons are trying to like control this guy's life and kind of ruin his life or whatever. And one of the things that he says in there is, they're saying is, try to get him to focus on the past or try to get him to focus on the future. Because the present is the only place that touches eternity. Okay. And I think that's really cool because we, we're always making decisions in any moment and then we think, oh, well, I'll just deal with it later or I'll just make that decision later or I'll just, you know, deal with the consequences of this later because I want to do this now. But we're always making decisions in eternity, you know, yeah. like you watch like throw a rock into the, into a body of water and the ripples go forever. No matter how small the rock is, no matter how, yeah. it's like it goes forever. So you know, the decisions that you make now are important and for today. You never know if you're, if you're gonna wake up tomorrow. You don't know what's gonna happen. Just like with our band, you know, people ask, "Where do you see us for yourself in five years?" And I'm like, "I don't see myself in five years. I just I'm here today." You know, you never know yeah. what God's gonna do. You get involved as far as music in you know, a music, but musical band and stuff like that. We just do what we love to do. Okay. You know, we just it was just part of what we love to do. And, and the doors open. I wasn't I wasn't seeking for this. You know, like okay. I said, but uh, about seek first the kingdom of heaven. And that's really what we wanted to do. We wanted to do whatever God wanted us to do in our lives, whether that was play in um, a local coffee shop and, you know, whatever. In my acoustic guitar, just the songs that came. But God had other plans, and it overwhelms me thinking about all the things. And, and, and if, it, if it goes on tomorrow, I'll still be shocked. You know, it's just amazing everything that's happened and where I came from. Oh, cool. Appreciate your time. And I know Laura, uh, we called her on the phone and said, appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Hope you can hear. <laughs> Funny, we're waiting for Flyleaf as we talk and as we speak. Once again, my name is John Boynton, aka 236 pounds, no more, for current TV and the visions of music. By the way, Laura, I think we're ready for a little Flyleaf, if you can handle it. For Flyleaf! Are you ready, in fact, for Flyleaf? Are you ready, in fact, for Flyleaf?